The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. But the truth is, is we have everything in us that we need to live a victorious life. Everything. All you got to do is learn how to live inside out. Don't be satisfied with some kind of a mediocre, okay, barely get along life. Go for the very, the very best life that God has for you, which is really so beyond anything that we even know how to understand that the only way you could ever understand it is to experience it. Obedience is extremely important to us. Our obedience doesn't change God, but our obedience is extremely important to us because it allows God to release into our life the things that we really want but many times don't have because we haven't shown that we're mature enough to handle them. How many of you know that if you really love your child, you won't give a 10-year-old a car and tell him to go for a ride? So many times God has to wait on things that he'd really like to give us <clears throat> because we just need to grow and mature a little bit more. Two scriptures we're going to look at right off the bat, John 14, 15. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. And I believe it's going to move people along in their desire to be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you really love me, you will obey and keep my commands. Wow. That's pretty simple, isn't it? We don't even have to try to figure that out. Don't need a theologian to interpret this one. He just says, if you really love me, you'll keep and obey my commandments. Now, I want you to notice something because I don't want you to be mixed up. He didn't say, if you keep my commandments, I'll love you. He already does. And do you know that God loves you perfectly? And the truth of the matter is, is he can never love you any more than he does at this moment. So we don't buy more of God's love for us with our obedience. God's love for us cannot grow because it's already completely perfect. In 1 John 4, it talks about how perfect love casteth out fear. And that perfect love that's being talked about there is the love of God for his children. Can you get a hold of that tonight, that God loves you right now perfectly, even though you may be very imperfect, God loves you perfectly. He loves you unconditionally. Now, to be honest, that's very hard for us to grasp in our society because we're so used to everything having a price and needing to earn and deserve things. But I say all the time, God is not for sale. And it was good for me to learn that in my own life, and it will also be good for you. God doesn't want us to obey, to buy his love. He wants us to obey him because we trust him. We believe that anything he asks us to do or not to do is for our good. God is a good God. He, that's all he does is good. There's no evil in God. There's no meanness in God. There's no vindictiveness in God. Everything that he asks us to do is for our good. And he wants us to trust that and believe that. When I read something and I say, okay, you know, God's asked me to do this, but I'm doing this. And so, you know, it looks like I need to have a little change of direction here. But it's going to work out good. It's going to be for my good. We need to look at it like that rather than, oh, man, is that going to be hard? I just don't know. That is really hard. I mean, all you do in this Christian life is sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. <laughs> is there anybody in this building that has found out that all the junk that God encourages you to give up is the stuff that's killing you and making you miserable anyway? So let, let's just stop acting like this is all so hard. It's just so hard. It's just so hard. Now, I'll tell you what's hard. What's hard is having no hope. 
no peace, no joy, no right standing with God, being full of bitterness, full of misery, having hangovers, being addicted to everything imaginable. That's what's hard. Serving God full on is not hard. So God's love for us cannot grow, but our love for him can grow. Our love for him does grow. As a matter of fact, I hope by you being in the presence of God this weekend during the worship and the teaching and just being with other Holy Ghost filled anointed people, learning the word, I believe that by the time you leave here, you will love God even a little bit more than you did when you walk in. It's, a, it's, it's ridiculous for me to tell you to obey God more without teaching you to love God more and to let him love you more because the only thing that's really gonna compel you to really be obedient is the love of Christ. So Jesus just laid down a very simple formula that we can all understand. If you love me, you will obey me. Now I can tell you that I obey God much more now than I did 30 years ago when I started this. And I obey him much more fully and much more promptly. And I'm sure that many of you can say the same thing. But at the same time, I have to say, I also love him so much more than I did then. I loved him in the beginning, but it was more or less like, I think we all start out loving God for what he's doing for us. Oh man, my sins are forgiven. I'm going to heaven. Yay, yay, yay. But we learn to love him because he's beautiful and because he's amazing. And we learn to love his word. And the more we have experience with God, the more we see him work in our lives, the more we see him work in our circumstances, the more we fall in love with God. Don't just love him, be in love with him. And there is a difference. 2 Corinthians 5.14 is another similar scripture, but... I saw this working in my own life. There were things that I simply didn't feel like that I could give up and do. And finally I got to the point where I loved God more than I loved the thing. And you know, if there's something in your life that you love and you're having a hard time giving it up, you just hang out with Jesus more, hang out in his word more, look at how beautiful he is and all the wonderful things he's done for you. Your heart's going to grow with love, and pretty soon, even though you may still love the thing that's not good for you, you'll love him more than you love the thing, and that love for him will enable you to lay it down. Let's look at this scripture, please, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us, because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. Now see, legally and positionally, before the throne of God, when Christ died, we died because all those that believe in him are seen to be in him. So we died to sin. The real you, the spiritual you, the born again you doesn't want to sin, doesn't want to disobey, doesn't want to do anything wrong. You're not having a problem with your spirit, you have a problem with your soul, with your mind, your will, your emotions. And those are, those are the areas that we have to let God have control of. And I'll tell you, it's a process. It takes time. It doesn't all happen overnight. We're all on a journey, but we need to be getting better and better all the time. Let's look at verse 15, 2 Corinthians 5, 15. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And he died for all so that all those who live might no longer, might live no longer to and for themselves. Now let me stop there just a minute and ask you who you're living for. You don't have to answer me out loud, but who are you living for? Are you living for yourself? To make yourself happy? You know, if we're not careful, we can, our relationship with God can even be all for us. It can be all about getting God to give me what I want, getting God to bless me. So he died for us so that we no longer have to live selfish, self-centered lives. He died for all so that all those who live might no longer live to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. Can everybody say, I don't have to live for myself. <laughs> and can I tell you that the more any of us do that, the more any of us live for ourselves, 
the more unhappy we're going to be. Now, what's my purpose this weekend? I've always got a purpose in all my teaching. There's somewhere that I want to try to get you to. I want to try to take you on a journey and, and get you somewhere. I don't want to leave you the way that I found you. Not that you're in bad shape, but I want you to be in better shape when you leave. <laughs> so my purpose is to increase your desire and determination to obey God more promptly and more completely. There's not one of us that doesn't need this, including me. I want to grow in my prompt, full obedience to God. And you're going to hear me saying our complete obedience to God, our full obedience to God a lot, because sometimes we obey God a little bit, and then we get deceived into thinking that we've done what God has asked us to do, when really we haven't been obedient, we've given a sacrifice. Nobody in here is going to grow in God if they don't want to. Because in the first place, you can't grow with God without studying, and you're not going to do that if you don't want to. So I want to increase your desire and your determination. You've got to have a desire, and you have to have determination to go all the way through with God. And you know, determination is something that God gives us. These are things that He places in us. The Bible says that God's given us a spirit of discipline and self-control. Wow, imagine that. So we say, well, I'm not very disciplined and I sure don't have any self-control. Yes, you do. If you're born again, you are full of discipline and self-control. Maybe it hasn't made it out of your spirit into any of your soul yet. But the truth is, is we have everything in us that we need to live a victorious life. Everything. All you got to do is learn how to live inside out. Now, I know your wheels are turning. How many of you right now know of an area in your life of disobedience, something that you need to put on the altar and just go ahead and get it over with? Let's see your hands if that's you. Okay, well, isn't that just downright amazing? I don't, I, I don't see hardly any hands that aren't up. Okay, now look at me. <laughs> Let mama tell you something. <laughs> what would we tell our kids? Why don't you just do what I tell you to do? <laughs> I'm telling you this for your own good. Come on now. You know, honestly and truly, and I mean, I want you to be honest, and I'm not condemning you at all, but we shouldn't have every hand in the building going up when I ask a question like that. We should maybe only have a few hands and maybe of people that haven't known God that long or haven't had any teaching, we need to get to the point where we don't wander around in the wilderness for 40 years like the silly Israelites did, trying to make an 11-day trip. 11 days across that desert, and they were out there 40 years going around and around and around the same dumb mountains. And the Bible says that that story about them is included for our instruction. So let me say it again. <laughs> My goal <laughs> is to increase your desire and your determination to obey God more completely and more promptly. You know why? Because God wants you to have the very best life that he can possibly give you. Now, when I say obey God, what do I mean? Number one, obey the written word. Anything you find in here that you're to do or not to do, that should be the end of it. <laughs> Boy, this is going, you're going to make me work hard this weekend, aren't you? <laughs> wow, that was really good. Let me, let me just rewind and try this again. Anything 